It's my pleasure uh, to invite our, our speaker uh, to the platform this morning. Uh, now this, oh, spoiler alert, she's already on stage. Um, she's incredible, she's an intern uh, with myself here at Highway and a fellow youth leader. She's amazing, she preached an amazing word on Friday night. So we thought it would be best if you guys got to hear it today as well. So why don't we invite Caleb Peters to bring us the word this morning. Good morning, everybody. Oh, thank you. Hello, everybody. How are you? Bear with me while I get my technology sorted. That's always an important part. Hmm. Hello? Hello? There we go. All right. So, let's just get straight into it. Um, this month we've been talking about the things behind me, deciding to be a disciple, our being the thing, choosing to be a disciple. Um, and part of discipleship, the part that I want to talk about this morning, means following God's plan, putting his agenda before your own. Um, trusting that God has a plan, he's going to use you for that plan, but that means we have to allow ourselves to be used. So, I have three points today. My first one is bringing what you have, even if you don't know how he's going to use it. And I absolutely love the story of the boy and the like, feeding of the 5,000. There's so much we can get from it. Um, so I'm going to paraphrase the story in case some of you don't know it. Um, Jesus has been teaching all day and he's gathered this huge crowd. Um, there's a, it says 5,000 men, not counting women and children. So I feel like I've often underestimated how many people that actually is. Like, 5,000 people is half the population of Kiroi, right? So if we go, we can probably assume that by the time you count women and children, there would be the population of Kiroi there, gathered to listen to Jesus, right? That is a lot of people. Um, so there was this crowd of over 5,000, and they were in quite a remote place, so it'd be a fair way to get any food. And as night came on, the Jews asked, uh, sorry, the disciples asked Jesus, how, like, how are we going to feed these people? What will we feed them? And there was a boy who had five loaves and two small fish who offered it up to Jesus. And Jesus took the bread and the fish and he gave them and he shared it out and it fed all those people and they had leftovers together. Um, so I've often focused on just the fact that either one, the boy was willing to give up his lunch um, or the miracle of Jesus being in 5,000 without little bit of food. But, when I was preparing for this sermon, I was thinking about it, I was like, it would have been so easy for that little boy to go, that's not going to help. Like, practically, two, five loaves and two fish, that's not going to feed over 5,000 people. If he if he'd shared it out, it would have fed him, it would have fed maybe his family, maybe some friends, if he was decided to be generous and share it with them. Um, but it was not going to feed the whole crowd. But he took it to Jesus and was like, here you go. Like, I don't know how you're going to use this, but you can have it if you want it. Um, and Jesus used that boy's little bit to do a miracle. He was able to feed, uh, sorry, he was able to use one boy's lunch to feed a huge crowd. He can use whatever you do. He used fishermen, he used tax collectors, traders of the time. He used murderers of Christians. He can use you. What we have or what we have done does not define our worth and our purpose to God. What does is that we were created by Him and that He sent His Son to die for us. He can and will use any of us, all of us, if we're willing, and on the simple condition that we humble ourselves before Him. That's it. And 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, my power is made perfect in weakness. Where you might see weakness, God sees a place in his heart for you. It's a place where we can bring all that we have and then let him move. Instead of trying to do it all in our own strength. Like that little boy's loaves and fish, if he tried to share it out in his own strength, it wasn't going to feed near as many people as it needed to, or that it could. Um, but when he goes to Jesus, his weakness, his maybe perceived lack, fed the whole crowd. God's power moved and it was made perfect. So never, never think what you have or um, what you have to offer is not worth giving to God because you don't know how the other is. It doesn't matter what you bring to God. What matters is that you bring it with a willing heart. 
you bring it ready for him to use. Whether you're young, whether you're old, um, whether you, just because you feel like you don't have enough talent or that one talent that you need to serve God, he can always, always use you. Um, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, hands in Christ Jesus to do good work, which has been prepared in advance for us to do. All of us, no matter where you are at in your life, have been prepared, created and prepared for good work. Bring whatever he has prepared you with and watch him use it powerfully. And sometimes, this is my second point, it means obeying God even when you don't know why or you don't know how it's going to work out. Um, so let's go straight to scripture, the story of the disciples fishing in John 21. It is a bit of scripture, so bear with me. Ooh, I can't read that. It's very small. Um, starting from John 21 1. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way, Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, and he called out to them, friends, haven't you caught any fish? No, they replied. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to fall to net in because of the large number of fish. So those disciples have been out on that lake all night fishing. I'm going to assume they weren't in that one spot all night. Like they probably moved around the lake, they looked for fish in other places, and they hadn't caught anything. So there would be no practical reason why suddenly choosing another spot was going to give up fish. Um, but Jesus said, throw it on the other side, and they did. And when they obeyed, they could barely feel the netting for the time of fish they caught. Um, sometimes when God tells us to do something, it's not going to make sense for what we see. Where we might see an empty lake, God sees that net full of fish. If we just follow what he's telling us. Um, and that is where obeying God, being a disciple, it will require a step of faith. It will take trusting that when God tells you to do something, when you obey, it will work out. Because, lucky for us, we come under the guidance and protection of an all-knowing, loving God. When he has a plan, and it's a good plan, Romans says, And in all things God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to him, his, his purpose, which is all of us. We all have a purpose, we have all been called, and so for all of us, we are working out to do. And like, trust me, I totally get it. It would be nice to know what the plan is. I get that but we don't need to. We just need to take a step of faith. Um, and as a given proverb, trust the Lord and lean not in your own understanding. Um, Isaiah 55 says, He works in ways we cannot imagine, that we cannot comprehend. God will work everything together. He will take your obedience step and lead you into His good plan. Um, just the path that might not always make sense to us straight away. And in that moment, that's when we need to take that step anyway. Take that step of faith, walk by faith and not by sight, and trust that God loves us enough that He has a plan that He will lead us into. Because we might only see a few things through the puzzle. We might not even see that, um, but God sees the whole picture. He wants to and He will guide us into the path He's leading us. We just have to obey. And I love even back in the Old Testament and um, the story of Noah, because Noah lived in the Middle East. Even then, it was primarily desert. And God came to me and told him to build a boat. He told him to build the ark because he was going to flood the earth. And so Noah looks around the desert he's living in, probably no rain clouds in sight, and goes, okay, let's build a boat. And so then he took, he spent, it says almost a hundred years building the ark. He spent his time, he spent his money, he spent his effort building a boat because God told him it was going to and, like, I've had my own time where I had to trust God when I didn't see where it was going. It was not quite as drastic as spending a hundred years building a boat. Um, but when I was getting ready to graduate and, like, move into my future, I had to figure out what I was going to do. Because that was a really important thing for me to have a plan. And so I made that plan. I was going to leave. I was going to go to uni in Brisbane. Um, I had accommodation lined up. I had my course lined up. I knew what I was going to do. And then... Like, I had things set into motion. And then God said, you're going to stay here. I was 
like, okay, I'm going to stay here then. But I didn't know how that was going to work. I knew I could stay at home, which was amazing. So I had a place to live, and that's about it. Um, I knew, like, I knew I wanted to continue to study, but I didn't know what that was going to look like. I didn't know what I was going to do for work. Um, but I was like, I cancelled my, my reservations. I was like, okay, let's see how this goes. Um, and things have fallen into place. Like, I, I've got a good job. I did a traineeship with my job. Um, I've had a chance to travel, which I knew I wanted to do. I've travelled both personally and with the church, which we used last year. And I've had this opportunity to take up the internship and do further study. I took a step, and God made things fall into place. And I've, I've, I've had times where I haven't followed God because I didn't know how it was going to work. Um, just a few weeks ago, I had this friend of mine on my heart, um, this holy, and God was saying, invite to church. I'm like, I've done that so many times, and she's never come, she's always just never shown up, so I'm not, I won't do it this week. And then the sermon that week was something that I knew she was struggling with. I should have invited her to church. But I didn't take that step because I didn't think it was going to work out. But God knew that. He was who might have been going to work it out. She might have come that way. But I wasn't obedient, so it didn't work out. No matter whether you see why or not, when God guides you, follow and trust and see it work out for good. And sometimes, here's a really challenging one, sometimes that will mean giving something up. It's an essential command of discipleship. Um, Matthew 16:24. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In Matthew 4, when Jesus called his first disciples, Simon Peter and Andrew, he tells them to follow him, and they leave their nets and follow him. He then does the same thing with James and John, and again they leave their boat, they leave their father, and they follow him. And these, those men were all fishermen. And back then it wasn't, it wasn't just a job. Like, their fathers were fishermen, their fathers before them were probably fishermen. Being fishermen was their livelihood, it was all they'd known. And yet they left it to follow God. Because becoming a believer, becoming born again, is accepting Christ's salvation, it should always result in a change. And we are washed clean of our old life, we have the opportunity and the ability to walk into a new life with God. But more specifically, being a disciple may mean that you have to give something up. Sometimes God's family calls you to follow and be a disciple, mainly in leaving something behind. It might be repacking up and leaving your whole life. I don't know, just turn that with God for yourself. But it might just be giving up something that you want. It might be a particular friendship or a particular relationship, a particular place to live, um, a particular job or a particular plan or dream that you have in mind that God goes, that's not, that's not it, that's not what I have. And you have to leave that behind and follow Him instead. It may just look like giving up some of your time or your money or your effort that you would rather use on something else for yourself in order to step in the way that God has called you. It will mean a sacrifice while believing God has better and help. If I can get the worship team up to you. Because um, two years ago, when I changed my decision from going to uni to staying here, when God said to, it meant giving up in my prayers and desires. It meant even some applications and some reservations, the money I already paid, I had to leave that behind, I had to give that up and go, okay, that's not what I had. And I was thinking the other day that my plans for the future I can, which like, I really help I do that because but I'm just getting early. Um, but I was thinking about that and I realized I can make all the plans that I want, but if that doesn't align with what God wants, I'm gonna have to leave them behind. I'm gonna have to do that again, I'm gonna have to go, Okay, well that's what I wanted, but this is what God wants, so let's do it. Um, God's plan might align with my personal desires, but it might not. And that's something that I'll have to come to terms with if I want to follow God and decide to be a disciple. Because following God's plan of being obedient is a huge part of just being a disciple, of, being, of having discipleship. Sometimes it might not look like it, it might not look like it's going to work out. Or we might have to give something up. But have trust in our God that He has something, He has something better lined up when we're away. So we're going to go back into a rebirth this morning. And let's praise Him for everything that He's done, everything that He's going to, the blessings that He's poured out from on us. Come on, let's stand to our feet.